So a few years ago on the Legendary Motor Car Show, I got to drive what was probably the most unique car I have driven to date. 1948 Talbot Lago T26C. That's a Formula One car from 1948. So 1948 was the FIA's second year of Formula One. This car is such a piece of history. I mean, the patina on the whole thing is insane. It looks like the original paint it really plays the part. So this car competed in 1948 in the FIA's second Formula One season, the third Grand Prix season post-World War II. The FIA had come together and they agreed on the Formula One regulations. They had Formula One, Formula Two, and Formula Three. As far as track day cars go, I don't know if you could beat it. I had never been in an early Formula One car before, and I have a whole new appreciation for these cars. These cars have to be the most exciting cars to drive on the track, even if you're not going all that fast and there's no one else around you. My dad just bought an independent comp car, and he wants me to shake it down and make sure it runs and drives properly. I'm also meeting Dennis out of the track. He's got a super cool 1948 Talbot Lago, an old formula car. He's having oil issues. He's got an oil leak intermittently when he starts pushing the car hard. Only like at speed. Yeah, yeah. Like it seemed to be, seemed to be related to uh, pushing it and going a bit quick. Obviously with modern F1 cars, it's a huge production getting one of those things on the track. The early formula cars, not much different. If Dennis is going to let me drive his 1948 F1 car, I better look the part. Okay, that's more appropriate. <laughs> I had to draw the line at your cloth helmet. I want to be safe. <laughs> okay, so there's a few things that are unique with cars like this that you should kind of be aware of. Okay. Um, this car has a pre-selector gearbox. That's okay. the weirdest thing to, uh, to get used to. What it means is that you change gears with this little with this little lever right and then to engage the gear you hit the clutch so just a quick tap or a full clutch stroke full, full clutch stroke okay yeah and uh and then this lever moves fairly easily yep so you got to kind of keep track of where it is right you can move it one gear two gears you can jump as many gears up and down as you want to at a time okay so it's pretty advanced for its day yeah um, no kidding but it also takes a little getting used to yeah I'm a little bit nervous. I've never driven a car with a pre-select transmission before. One of the weirdest things I've ever driven. I'm gonna start off slow and work my way up to speed. I wanna see when the oil starts leaking. I'm also a little bit apprehensive. I don't want the oil leaking onto the rear tires. It is a million dollar car. We decided to put a camera on the engine and on the pedals. I wanna see where the leak starts from. I'm really starting to like this transmission. I'm really enjoying this car. It is super cool. And I'm getting a bunch of laps in. Eh, probably too many laps. <laughs> I ran it out of gas. <laughs> you like it? It's so cool, like it's built for a bigger track, obviously. Yeah. It's so cool, so you can pick your marks pretty easily. Isn't it great? Yeah. Like you can see, like you drive this and you go, this is why people drive open wheel cars. Here's a sight you'll never see again, a Cobra towing a Talbot Lago. The driving experience of the car was like nothing else. You're sitting up on what kind of feels like a throne because you could just fall out of either side You've got this giant wheel in front of you and the pre-selector. The pre-selector was super cool. So how the pre-selector worked was you could pre-select the gear and until you pushed in the clutch, it wouldn't go into that gear. So the technology would come in handy, for example, on a fourth gear straightaway going down to a second gear corner. You'd be going down the straightaway, you'd pre-select second gear, you'd do all your braking, and then you press in the clutch do your extra big blip going down to second gear and the car would jump straight into second gear, giving the car a little bit of an advantage over the other cars in the field. 
As far as driving the thing went, you see in the video, I've got my left foot on one side, all by itself for the clutch, and the gas and the brake on the other side, separated like I'm in a go-kart. And just the visibility out the front, it was unbelievable. Better than a go-kart. You could see where the front wheels were, where the front tires landed on each corner. You could really place them inside the curb, outside the curb, wherever you wanted. And they were super physical. Because there was no bolsters on the seat, no side support, it was incredibly demanding. The guys who raced those big races back in the day must have had unbelievable core strength. It was really more like motocross racing than a modern race car. You really had to hang onto the wheel and lean into every corner so that you weren't flung to the outside. I'm at TMP Racetrack trying to help our customer find the intermittent oil leak. So far, I haven't had any luck. Dennis is convinced that it happens in left-handers, so we decided to put the camera back on it and drive hard in a circle to see if we could get it to leak. Finally, the thing starts to leak, and it's leaking like a sieve out of the fuel pumps. Now, it's up to my dad and Jay to figure out how to fix it. My work is done. Tough day. Gary's diagnosed the problem on the Talbo Lago. Under certain G's, in a certain type of corner, it seems to be leaking through the vent hole. Now it's up to us to figure out, do we plug the vent hole or do we come up with another solution? After removing the fuel pump, it looks like somebody's already tried to restrict the oil flow to the vent. Obviously the pumps still need to be vented and we can't make that hole much smaller. After taking the pumps apart and having a good look at it, I think the simplest solution is to catch the oil. As far as the Talbo, what's really cool about some of these old race cars is one, they're fabulous cars to drive, but it's interesting how these cars were engineered. And sometimes some real simple problems can stump us. And eventually we just had a real simple solution to a simple problem, and it was just catching the oil. It wasn't that much, and it was just in certain corners. Long and the short, there's always a solution. Sometimes it costs some money in the case of the Boss 9, other times it's very simple.